Geeks at the Nurse Table coming at you. We're going to talk some Mandalorian. We're going to talk some Flash trailer. And who's going to actually still stay alive after Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Let's go, people. Let's talk about it. We're back, people. One more time. Episode 25. <laughs> you were at 24? 25. 20. <laughs> <laughs> and which one would be better than 25? 26. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, no, <laughs> welcome back, people. Welcome back, geeks at the nurse table coming at you. We're happy to come at you at least one more time for your listening and viewing pleasure. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, because it's not like I messed up the last one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what last yeah, so... one? We didn't, have a, we didn't have one last time. We oh have one. yeah, still breaks my heart. Duh. Uh, We'll explain and get more into that in a little bit. But for right now, let me just introduce my boys. Besides the names that you may see on the screen, but if you're listening to us on normal Apple Podcasts as well as Spotify, then you're not going to see no names. Amazon. Oh, and Amazon <laughs> Podcast. Yeah, we on the, God, Leah, we on there too. So that's awesome. All right. So first things first, my man, Mike. Hello there. Here we go. I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Uh, I'm about to break it. Uh, <laughs> George. What's up, peeps? And my main man, Kevy Kev. What's up? And I'm Larry, and together we make up Geeks at the Nurse Table. So you saw what we actually have to talk about. We said in the beginning of the video. Self right now, you already know what it's hitting for. So grab your chair, pull that thing up to the table. We got some stuff to talk about because man, look, we're gonna so, start off with Mando. It's impossible for us to, to go to anything else. So, guys, let's go ahead and just talk about the Mandalorian. I need to hear y'all guys' point of view of exactly what <sighs> your final thoughts were of that episode. Now, I know. If it's like to be continued for y'all guys from last week. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Let's do it again, fellas. Let's do it again. Yeah. Nobody knows. <laughs> one, one more time with feeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one more time. Make me feel it, Mike. Make me feel it. <laughs> Pause. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, so Kev, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start off with you. Okay. With the final episode of Mandalorian, when the screen went black and the show was officially over, what was your final thoughts? Instead of you know, saying it, I'll show you real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> it it, it honestly felt like a series finale. And I texted, I remember me and George went, <laughs> said, well, that's on our days off. We played Call of Duty right afterwards. <laughs> that we, did. And we just talked about it on, on our party chat. And we both said it felt like a series finale instead of a season finale. Right. Because, okay, you had the, you, you, you guys thought, you know, the, the Empire, First Order, don't, don't know First Order yet. And then. You got Mandal, you got Mando back, you know, Mandalore and Mandalore. The Mando decides to go after, well, kind of like the first season. He goes to go do bounties now. He's going to do this. He's going he's gonna to stay in, he's not just going to stay in one place. He's going to keep going a different place with Grogu, who is officially his son. He's officially his son. So happy about that. And he just puts his feet up. Grogu goes plays in, in the little pond area and it just goes left. <laughs> Like it, like it just ends. Like they just retired. <laughs> um, I mean, I I liked the episode. It was uh, it, underwhelming, I guess, a little bit. It to me, it felt a little underwhelming. Now, I understand what people were thinking. Like maybe this could be huge. Like 
the season two finale with Luke, with Luke Skywalker coming and just destroying the droid and everything. People are thinking something like that, but yeah, kind of just what we talked, what we did, but we, we guys don't know from our last podcast. We talked about predictions and what could happen, and yeah, some of it <laughs> come true. Like the the other spy, what other spy? <laughs> they they yeah, never we didn't, they we didn't never, get any of that. We yeah. didn't get any of that, so it's like there okay, are no spies. Yeah, that, that that's literally what they what they did. <laughs> but I mean, the shots were amazing. The fight scenes. I want to talk about that scene real quick with Mando with with none of his weapons. But he grabs them from the uh, the troopers, and he tells R five to keep shutting off the shield, and he goes to fight each each uh, trooper left and right, and he pulls the Call of Duty. He throws a, a knife at the guy's neck. <laughs> I thought, I'm like, what? <laughs> that whole scene was just amazing. The the fights were great. Again, it just left a few questions, but I mean, if it's true that season four is already wrapped up the you know screen, you know the scripts and everything, they already have, they already know what they're going to do. Maybe we'll get some answers, but we'll we'll see. But overall, I mean, it was good. It it was it was good. (laughs) (laughs) It was okay. (laughs) Now he's telling Mario, "Hey, it's okay. It's okay." it's okay. Everything it's is okay. good. Yeah. Everything is okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah that sounds pretty good, actually. I ain't gonna lie. Thank uh, you. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, George, since you're already talking, go ahead and give me yours. Uh, so, you, what do you so, think? Uh, yeah, so it was a little bit of a lackluster season finale, um, but it did come full circle. You know what I mean? I, the, I think from where you look at it, uh, we start season one, episode one. He's going to, you know, the... the um, the what do you call group it cargo. The, yeah group cargo but he's going over to you know he's doing his bounties and something um comes back full circle um he's gonna be doing bounties but this time it's for the republic which is kind of interesting that he's kind of changed his mentality of working with the republic and something like that so he's gonna be doing stuff with that but this is gonna be great to see grogu ding grogu by the way yeah. but that was put some respect on that name um <laughs> but yeah got Din Grogu who's going to be doing bounties with him. So that's going to be interesting to see because he's going to start doing his Mandalorian training. You know what I mean? Who's to say that we won't see him start getting his jetpack. You know, we'll see him get a, a blaster um, in this next coming seasons. Um, and here's the thing. We don't know where this season's going to be because from what I'm hearing, the Ahsoka series is not tied to the end of Mandalorian. Okay? Obviously, we already know that. It's going off and doing its own thing and they're trying to right. keep it that way. Because there may be a large gap of time where we don't see Grogu and Mando. You know what I mean? What's what's the uh, the slate for season four? We're talking about 2024, 2025. You know what I mean? So it's gonna be a large chunk of time that we don't get the Mando, the Grogu. Uh, we may not even hear about what happens with the other Mandalorians on Mandalore. Um, and then here's here's another thing. So that ending, we see Moff Gideon die, right? But literally right before that, what did we see right before that? The clone wake up. The clones, right? So if you guys remember, Moff oh. Gideon in season one and season two, they were, and this is big on the on the whole thing now, but he had a stash. A little, a little mustache, right? Yeah, These yeah clones, I saw that too. Yeah. Right? These clones don't have that. So there's a possibility that Moff Gideon is still alive. Um, and he is not at that base where he died at because you got to think that that death was so lackluster. I mean, granted, it was beautiful. You had Bo, you had Din and you had Grogu. Grogu's doing the same thing that Kanan Jarrus did when he was trying to keep everybody alive in, in Rebels. You know, he did the force hold against the, the fire. It was beautiful, but it was kind of like a dang, that's how you kill him off. Come on. That's not how you end it. So they crashed the ship on him though. That's that's kind of a big deal. Like I, mean, I know it's a fireball, but like outside of like his actual death, like they dropped the ship on him. Yeah, that's, I don't that's think that was crazy. I mean, it was cool, <laughs> and and you know it goes <laughs> it goes to say like you know we're spoiled because we saw that season two ending. We're like, oh, Luke, and it's cool because they played on the hallway fight scene the same way because now instead of Luke doing the hallway fight scene, we had Mando do that hallway fight scene, but he did it like a oh. whole nother level. 
See, I didn't even think of that. When I saw him doing that, it went like right to Phantom Menace for me. Yeah, it well, because of the, the, the Black yeah, Shield. Yeah. 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 It was definitely yeah. Phantom Menace, but then you go ahead and think about it. It's like, it's the Phantom Menace, Menace times Mando Season 2, like that finale, and you just, that hallway fight scene. It's 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 trademark Star Wars because hallway fight Boy, scenes they, are crazy now. Yeah, I was about to say, they really love their hallway fight scenes. Oh, yeah, it's it's no brainer. Like, it's like, if you don't have a hallway fight scene, are, is it really Star Wars? <laughs> how how would George put it? It's it's like poetry. It's, it's, it's like poetry. To rhyme. Yeah, it's supposed to rhyme. It's every, <laughs> so, I mean, here's the deal. Season three, it was an amazing season. I mean, that fight scene with the Mandalorians and the jetpack troopers was super cool because we've never seen that in live action. Um, and and just I don't know, man. It was it wasn't bad, but it wasn't my oh my god, like that was a great season finale. Yeah. Like I feel like yeah. the middle of the season was more hype than the end of the season. <clears throat> She got yes. her. She got the dark saber just to get crushed. Yeah, but even even then, the way she got the dark saber was kind of like, all right, here, there you go. Technically, I'm just giving it to you because you are the rightful owner now. Like, ah. with, with, with the dark saber being crushed, that just means a new type of Mandalorian religion can come forward. Like that's broken. That's the past. It's done. Well, now the, the Mandalorians is- are going to be together. And they can forge a new future, a new destiny. I, I it, actually like the fact it got broke. It, I mean, the saber was broken, but the kyber crystal is still inside. Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen with the kyber crystal? Make a little one for Grogu? Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Oh, I mean, that that point, <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that point, it just comes full circle. So the fact that it was broken, I mean, the kid the kid can't hold that dark saber. That thing's like bigger than him. So now if they keep the crystal for him, you know, we don't. I don't even know who took the crystal. If anybody did take the crystal, you know what I mean. They didn't show that. So what if yeah, Mando took the crystal, and he's he has it ready to go just in case to set a set that up for him. If if uh, Kylo and Rey can rip Luke Skywalker's saber in half, and then in the next movie it's magically back together, someone can pick up the Kyber crystal before yeah. the planet explodes. Exactly. <laughs> We're gonna start talking about that movie, man. <laughs> you can't now. It's gonna continue. I'm excited for that. <laughs> I'm like, kind of excited that they're gonna write like Daisy Ridley's said, back, baby. Yeah. And okay, we'll take it. We'll see what I'll happens. Take it. Listen, yeah. I think it's a great idea. I just uh, the fact that they're taking Luke's story from the EU and and kind of creating it around Ray now because technically Ray is the leader of the Jedi Order <laughs> at this point. Ray eh, eh. should have been his daughter. Like, come on. But then that wouldn't have made sense, though. Find a way to make sense. I mean, listen. It, it, I anything would have been better than what they did. But I they mean, can get into, like, what George wanted with, like, the wills of the Force now. And mm-hmm. they can get into, like, what Metaclorians are and how, like, yeah. that shapes the whole galaxy. And, and that's my hope because that Mangold movie is set 25,000 years before the High Republic. So if we get that and they talk about the wills and they talk about the midichlorians and then after that we get the story of Rey and this new Jedi order, maybe that can fill in some gaps because maybe she could be, a, you know, a product of the wills. I'd be crazy. That was my theory, like way back when was like she was like a secret, like fourth baby that was like the real chosen one. And that didn't happen. <laughs> a lot of things didn't happen. No. <laughs> But maybe they can recon and fix things. You know, maybe they can say that she's okay. They can't. It's it's they they, they can't. I mean, at okay, this point, we it's just, up in the air. Yeah, we just have to hope that you know that something gets fixed in the midst of everything. But just in case, just so we can finish it off, Mike. You know, what was your final thoughts of the, of the last uh, episode, especially the whole season? I think the whole season had a couple ups and downs. Um, I went into this having not watched um, the first two seasons when they came out, I watched them later uh, because I was made at Star Wars. So I watched them last year. And um, so I knew it was going to happen with the hallway. And um, the whole season, I was like, they can't top that. They can't top that. You can't top Luke coming back. There's just nothing you can do. So I went into the episode and with kind of low expectations, kind of hoping, you know, like, Grogu would get the mythosaur and all that. It didn't happen. Um, but I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, I think they set up a clean slate for season four. 
mm-hmm. if you know rumors are true, Favreau was compromised with this season and uh, with what his vision was. Mm-hmm. And maybe he's just taking it back to basics. I mean, it's literally resetting it back to, okay, I'm just going to do bounties now across the galaxy. You know, they did this awesome Mandalorian story, and now they're going to go back to like a space western. Okay, I'll take it. Um, but I do think it's interesting. The Mandalorians are now, um, they have their home and they're all together. Um, and we know the, uh, the new Republic kind of sucks at patrolling the, uh, the outer rim and maybe the outer rim will be the Mandalorian territory where they patrol it. Mm, I mean, that's cool. right. I, I, I'd be for that. <laughs> I mean, you have to pay them a lot, but they'll still do it. <laughs> I mean, they'll, they'll do it right too. They don't take mm-hmm. they don't play no games. And it's it's nice seeing um a happy ending for Din and Din Grogu. Like you don't normally get that. Um they literally just get to sit down and put their feet up. That's that's great. Literally. Yeah. While girl was um in the yard. <laughs> I don't know. A lot a lot of people were mad about like the Dr. Pershing and his episode. I loved that episode. That was my favorite episode of the season. Like mm-hmm. I absolutely love that seeing Coruscant, seeing all like the politics. <laughs> I, I, I just love it. That's, what, like, Larry? You didn't like it? No. What yeah. is up? What is up with y'all two? And I'm pointing at you and you, you and George <laughs> and and Mike. I'm look pointing at y'all two. What is up with y'all loving the most boringest episodes of Star Wars that <laughs> within the last year? Because well, that feel that real. told me that it's, I was going exactly. to love with, with it, it, Endor. It, it grounds it. it Endor grounds it. was just we, like, we here, brother. <laughs> <laughs> like, when, when see, um, the prequel trilogy, um, I was always like, hey, this is cool. It was like the other things that were kind of boring in the movies. But I was like, seeing like the Senate and like the Jedi Council and then like kind of eventually like figuring out in my, in my mind of like, they just you can't really mix like religion and you know politics and that's why it gets all mixed up. And I just I I love that. It just makes it feel like a real world. Yeah, just seeing the diplomacy stuff, the behind mm-hmm. the scenes, the the business side of the galaxy. <laughs> you don't think that sounds cool? Like I don't know. Like you said, seeing the Senate, it's funny for me because it looks like yo, that that galaxy is is real because that's us every day. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. what we go through every day. We can't even get our own Senate to compromise correctly. You think the galaxy is going to be able to do the same? So it's yeah. just, it becomes, <laughs> it's full circle for me. It's just kind of like, yeah, that's real. It, and- it, 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 it adds <laughs> layers on things. Like, it's, they start off A New Hope with Vader and Leia arguing about, like... The Senate. Uh, the, yeah, the Senate, yeah. Um, it's it's true Star Wars. It's, it's exactly yeah. what it is. Lightsabers wow. are awesome. The Force is awesome. Pew pew pew. Cool, but ground it. Give it rules. Give it. Make it lived in. Like, mm-hmm. I love it. Sorry, Larry. It's like a circle. <laughs> it's like a circle. It's like a, it's like a big circle. <laughs> the circle alive. My friend. Because, but yeah, no, I I enjoyed the, the whole season. Um, like, sorry. <laughs> um, I'll st- never mind. I'll stop. No, 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 no. I want you to continue. Continue. Mike. Um, <laughs> like, come on, man. We got to see, like, we didn't see it fully, but we got to see a mythosaur, and now we get to kind of write that in our head for the next year or two, and we'll live up to it. I don't know, but I'm excited. He's so excited. He just so- can't hide it. <laughs> The exciting parts of the of the whole entire season. One of them was the Mythosaur, correct? Because we all got hyped up about the Mythosaur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That had nothing to do with politics. <laughs> that had <laughs> nothing to do. No, that that with brought the back galaxy. the legend stuff because that stuff is like we've never seen it. We hear about it. We so it's almost like pure nostalgia. We see it for the first time. We're like, this is what a mythosaur looks like. Because it's one thing to see it on, you know, on the arm plate there, right, right. But when you see it in real life, you're like, the magnitude of the beast itself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then everybody was under the impression of, man, um, somebody's gonna ride this thing, and right. it's gonna be pretty freaking cool because of how massive we saw it. So that's why it was cool for me. 
I, I don't I, remember no, the I guy's agree. name, but rewind it back to episode one where the Ugnot guy, uh, the you know, I've spoken, I can't remember his name. I he remember. tells Din, he's like, your people rode the great mythosaur. You can't ride this little mm-hmm. hip you back, whatever it was. Like the mythosaur mm-hmm. has been talked about since episode one. Mm-hmm. And guess what, Larry? It's coming full circle. I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. <laughs> okay. So, Kev, I, I, I get your point of view. I kind of was saying the same thing. The the episode, and I'm not going to jump on you right now, Mike. I get to you in a minute. But, uh, this is my game, dude. I'm talking. Talk. <laughs> uh, I got no smoke at all. But uh, when, it, <laughs> when it comes to the last episode, I kind of felt the same way, Kev. Like, it, it felt very, very final. Like, very final. And I I can I can see and understand the importance of them showing the rise of Mandalore and having having Den and Grogu just go ahead and go on their own. But I mean, what it felt like for sure, for sure was literally Filoni was like, I'm going to have a finale to my story that I did not get at the end of episode, I mean or season two, because they took over. So it's like, all right, I got the finale that I wanted. Like he, like, this is over now. This is end of what I started. Now we can continue on to the next. So that's the vibe that I got from it. It felt very, very final. Uh, look, look, but look at it this way: every box that the first season had is has been checked. Correct. So you save. You know, the Mandalorians are back. They're prospering. It's all the things are just. Um, uh, mustache. I can't even think of his name. He's gone. He's done. Pershing has been eliminated. And so, remember, right. guys, it's all clean slate. And this is exactly, and that's what they needed to do for you, Larry, for people like you who did not appreciate the sequel trilogy. They have to go ahead and fix some of the wrongs in this series, and this is kind of their way of doing it. So it is going to be a long waiting game, but at the end of the day, I feel like they're they're getting their bearings of what needs to be done, fixed, corrected, all that good stuff, so that when they do continue their movies and their TV shows and so on and so forth, they don't have a, a segregation of Star Wars fans. Because at the end of the day, Star Wars for fans is will always be Star Wars. You know what I mean? Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, we're still going to love Star Wars in some way, shape, or form. It's always going to bring us back. And, that, and Disney's been able to do that at least in my opinion. Look what yeah, the listen to the guy who's sitting in the corner in the dark. Sorry, I had to turn my light down because it was <laughs> reflecting off my spectacles. Getting some Palpatine vibes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, just sitting there in the dark, it's like, yeah, you who don't like the sequel series. So, yeah. Order, do what you think. Do, do it. it. <laughs> But no, uh, look, thing, Ju- look, uh, look uh, what I'm the Clone Wars head. cartoon. Uh, look what the Clone Wars cartoon did for the prequels. You have yeah. this whole generation of kids who grew up on that, and that was their favorite thing. And you had the older Star Wars fans who were like, "Oh, f this! I I can't get into these prequels." Well, they sat there and they watched the Clone Wars, and it expanded it for them. It gave them something to latch on to. Um, fans like me were talking about. They had that meeting where they talked about um, Project Lazarus. Project no. Um, Necromancer, Necromancer and, yep. you know the the resurrection of Palpatine, and I I saw uh, the Hux, and I was like, oh, that's cool. They're bringing that in, and maybe they'll fix some things. Maybe. Real quick, Mike, did yeah. you catch when Mando went back to go talk to the uh, the guy in the uh, Re- rebellion, whatever the guy, the older Asian guy? Yeah, I forgot his name. Did you see all the helmets? Yes. Did you see the one stormtrooper helmet that had the scratch in front of it? If I did, it's not ringing a bell. Oh, okay. Because I was talking to a buddy of mine. He said that was the helmets from that um, that EU book that they had the zombies. Yeah. It totally is. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what they called it, but I was like, Red, oh, snap. <laughs> Red, so, on the cover of that book, it's like 
these like stormtrooper helmets hanging from like meat hooks. Yeah, well, that that's totally what it's. Oh, yep. what is that called? I forgot too. He told me the other day. I'm like, I missed that. So I went back and watched it. And I was like, Oh, oh yeah, that's so dude. cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, red something, and then the next one is called like Blue Harvest or something. Uh, yeah, the Blue yeah, Harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's so cool. I yeah, I was looking that at that. I was like, I wonder if Mike caught that. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> Anywho, all right, did y'all, Carry did y'all on, Larry. get y'all Star Wars? Did you get y'all Star Wars out? I'm not going to dive more into it, Larry. Larry, Star Wars, as we talked about last week, that was cut off. Um, <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, did it actually for... happen? It in our hearts, it, it did. It, it, it happened <laughs> in our hearts. It will forever be in our heads. Just no one can hear it or see it. It's one of the problems that I had with Star Wars, but it took me having a kid and her falling in love with it to like realize it. So Star Wars is huge, and it got too big for me where I got mad. Um, but it's huge because it's for everybody. It's such a story that everybody can take something from it. My four-year-old, Charlie, she is so into Darth Vader right now. And, like, just um, – I was trying to tell her yesterday what, like, what the Force was. And she's going off on, like, this uh, imagination explosion of, like, well, does the Force do this? Does this guy do this? Are they good guys? Why do they fight? Um, mm-hmm. it's for everybody because everybody can take what they want from it and they can make it their own. And if you don't feel like you have anything to say, just ask questions. And Star Wars fans are always, well, they should be anyway, willing to include and educate. Um, so please don't ever feel left out of Star Wars conversation. Oh, I'm never left out of the Star Wars conversation. <laughs> I just didn't want us to go an additional 20 minutes on the same subject because yeah. we're already in it for a half hour. It's Star Wars, bro. I don't know when to shut up. Exactly. <laughs> but it's all it's all good. That the only thing that I wish that what what would make me happy, especially when it comes to the new sequels, is that because I didn't touch on this at all. If the Mandalorians are back in Mandalore, that means they have power. And that power has to grow. Mm-hmm. And we already know that, that Grogu is going to be old. I would love to see him as the leader of the Mandalorians in the sequels that's coming absolutely. up. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, yo, wouldn't that be such like a mic drop that like if Mandalorian season five, like, it doesn't happen until after that movie and they land on like Mandalore and there's like Din Grogu, like totally yes. like armored out armored out <laughs> talking and and flipping and let him have the dark saber mm-hmm. wow i mean yeah, that'll, uh, i'm shoot that is, you got to think if you do it after the movies you know what i mean and the and the sequel trilogy we're talking about 20 something years after this whole thing yeah so grogu would mm-hmm. be in his 70s pushing right. 100 pushing 100 yeah so he may be Get into that point, so we're just getting the ball rolling at this point. Exactly. He's, start, he's, 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 he's getting ready to talk. You can hear when uh, he helps uh, uh, Den out. He says, "Good job, kid." You hear him go. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's starting to starting to ooze his way out. So in another twenty years, I mean, heck, you never know what's going to happen when it comes to Mando and what have you, and how he has to take over now. And it will be him on the Mythosaur and let the show show how he actually took over Mandalore. That would be absolutely incredible. So let's say they don't do it in the movie. They had that TV show Skeleton Crew coming up, which is like Stranger yep. Things, Star Wars, but they get into like all kinds of weird things. What if they like travel to the future or something? And get Ooh, like some yes. Some kind of crazy Mando thing. I showed that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Heck so, yeah. 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 Heck yeah. <laughs> Grandpa Mando. Graham, Grandpa. All right, all right. So there we go. That that'll be the end of our good old discussion of oh, the Mandalorian. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the show was awesome. I mean, the show was incredible. I I mean, it's it's sad that we have to wait for so long for the next. Ep- I mean, for the next season that and see where the story is going to go. But uh, you I'm, know, so Larry, it's going to go quick because. Andor season two is coming up. <laughs> Let's go. He's still alive. Jeez. Mike, I feel like Larry is the 
yin to our yang or vice versa, bro. It's like we're like, yeah. He's like, oh, okay, God. Nah. <laughs> man, Andor was rough, man. I don't care what y'all say. And watch Andor was rough. Uh, I, mean, I would like, watch that whole thing again, like one way out, one way out. It was by way yourself. All- by yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got you, buddy. <laughs> you and George. You and George. Dang right. Dang right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Me and Kevin be like. I mean, I enjoy that. I just wouldn't watch again. But I mean, go ahead. <laughs> Kevin. Have fun. You. Have I'll fun. You. I love you too, buddy. Hey. Yeah. But you know what actually can be fun? The Flash trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got you got to say it for the people who aren't watching, Larry. I was going to say it. I just wanted to get your well, Mike did it, so it was great. The <laughs> he points at it too. Trailer. The Flash trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, people. The Flash trailer. The uh, so. Trailer 2 was released about a week ago, and uh, we, together as a group, didn't have an opportunity to actually talk about it. Uh, so, And I, I literally, I don't, I don't think we even had a text message discussion on it at all. So I'm actually curious to see what y'all guys actually thought about that trailer because my reaction to it was a little different than I think that y'all guys probably went. I mean, so it's only it's only fitting if Mike starts the song. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. DC Mike. It there was, you go. You know, it, yeah, Mike. It was, a, it was a trailer. It wasn't anything special. Are you kidding me? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he said ready. <laughs> 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 I've had this since 1989. Okay. He brought he, up the key imposter. He, he, he. Little did he know, he has that next to his bed every night, and he kisses it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Mike? Yeah, um, right, Mike. <laughs> he said it. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. It's... I hope this is the perfect send-off and bookend for the Snyderverse, and I think it can <clears throat> really... Um, the tone is kind of obvious from the trailer. Um, it's going to be serious, but have some lighthearted in it. Um, we get to see Ben one last time. Um, there's still a lot that's held back from everyone who saw it already is saying uh, they have their embargo, but they said like the whole third act hasn't been released. Um, yeah, I'm so excited for it. Seeing like the new Batwing and as it like comes down and like opens up like a bat, I thought that was really cool. Um, we still haven't even seen the new Batmobile in action. Well, the old Batmobile rather, but um. You got the old no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm super excited for it. Um, obviously, but I just I think this is one that can be a movie that Marvel and DC fans will enjoy. Um, I hope so. Uh, it's always there's this big bias, but I think bringing you know Keaton in and I think it's a winner. You know what? Don't look at me like that. Whatever. I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of hope. No, no. I'm sorry. I was look the whole time while you was speaking very eloquently. I may, I may add. Beautiful. Mike. I was wondering what the heck Kev was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Kev rolled out of, out of scene. I'm like, what the heck is going on with Kev? <laughs> he tried to mission as possible, mission impossible, his way out the screen for a second. <laughs> No, I was letting Mike do his thing. I'm listening. I just had to, I just had to grab something because I'm, I'm waiting for. I'm just wait, I'm just waiting for my turn so I can, you know. Did you get snacks? You know, you know what? You got it. No. You got it. It's no. on you, bro. It's on Go you, bro. It. Okay, so we talked about uh, Ezra and his personal outside work. What's the word? Uh, Shenanigans, debauchery. Yeah, yeah, and me personally, okay, me personally, I, the Justice League movie, I wasn't really thrilled with his performance as Barry Allen, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know what it was, it... thanks, Liar, <laughs> it, 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 his, him just, 
I don't know. His performance. Spit it out, exactly Kev. For me. I did, Jackal. <laughs> Sorry, love you, buddy. Keep on. That, did it? Did it not work for you? Because, or do you watch like the CW Flash at all? I did, but that wasn't the reason. Okay, I was unsure if you're like comparing him to Grant. Um, no, as much as I love Grant, I it, uh, no, I like I like to keep the shows and the movie stuff separate from one another. Yeah. Okay. So it's it, I don't know I, I his performance didn't really do it for me. Now it could be just because there's just his the lack of screen time. I got I don't know and his running. Me and Larry talked about it. And he just did it. <laughs> I didn't like the way he ran. <laughs> He looked like an ice skater. <laughs> and I and I thought about it too. Why was his lightning blue? I mean, what color is your lightning? I'll have one, but wow. I, don't <laughs> I don't know. What's wrong with it, the lightning? Uh, because we always, even in the sh- like the anime shows and movies, like it was there was it was always, yellow. always yellow. His, oh. it was always yellow, and Reverse Flash was dark red. But so it was like, but isn't blue lightning faster than yellow lightning? We gotta get Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Uh... <laughs> well, in theory, like if you look at it as like flames, right? Red flame isn't as hot as blue flame. Blue flame mm-hmm. is hotter. So what okay. if this is we're going into the past, right? We're going in time traveling. So what if his electricity is more powerful enough for him to do this now, and he taps into blue lightning and not red lightning or orange lightning, whatever you want to call it? That's that's, a, that's a theory. Um, normally, when he time travels, he uses something called like the cosmic treadmill, <laughs> which is exactly what it sounds like. Extra cardio that day, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah going into this movie i i really am not having any expectations or high expectations with it but seeing this past trailer i'm watching it and okay it looks great okay <laughs> it, looks, <laughs> it looks great the, the visuals look great and i mean come on come on i mean i had to no way i had to i really had to is that another one to your collection? Yeah. <laughs> You'd make a fine addition to my collection. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's from the movie actually. It is. That's, that's a big deal. Yeah. Wow. And... I I was just gonna get like an intervention for you, but like you're good in my book now. <laughs> oh, thanks. I don't think he needs one. He's just gonna keep doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I made a monster. Hey Larry. Yeah, you did. Take pride in your but... creation, Larry. I feel like that's what people say. Like that's what people say to my parents all the time when they look at me. <laughs> <laughs> and your dad just goes, <laughs> "I had nothing to do with that." <laughs> He'll pull up the. It wasn't me. So <laughs> <laughs> sure, I was just jamming out to that before the podcast starts. <laughs> I bet you. you were the only person to jam out to that in ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> But overall, I mean, the trailer looked great. Um, from what I hear from CinemaCon, because spoiled little people got to see the movie early, they all say it's pretty, pretty good. And they're saying Ezra's performance is pretty amazing. It's You get the, the laughs. You also get the tears a little bit. And... <sighs> Yeah, the, and the visuals, again, look amazing. Batman looks great, both of them. <laughs> Supergirl looks good. Uh, the the suit kind of, uh, what's the word? The suit at first kind of, I, I always found the suit, the new suit, a lot better than the old one. I didn't really like the Justice League suit. It kind of, it, because it's rubber bands all over it. <laughs> I, never, I never really liked that suit much. But this one... I, I want the, the poster of him, the other version of the Flash, and Supergirl to stand in there. That 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 looked great. And I'm excited for this movie now. I am. I <laughs> it, it trailer's got me. This movie could absolutely suck to us or it could be great. Overall, Flash is my favorite DC character and I'm excited for it. 
All right, George, hit me. So, now, George, since me and Kevin showed our like Flash movie merchandise, where's yours? Uh, I left that at home. Oh. It's uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll show you next time. I got you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, unlike you guys, though, I did not see the second trailer. I did not. I have not seen second trailer. Lair, lair, lair. One, two, three. George. George. <laughs> I gotta hate you guys. Um, so, yeah, I will watch the trailer. But, I mean, anything right now for what I've seen in the prior trailers and, you know, just what I've heard about it. Um. I'm like Kev. I'm going in open minded. You know, I'm gonna go in the same way that I did when we went to go see Shazam two. Just gonna go in with open mind. Uh, DC's got a lot of show, or it's got a lot of making up to do for me, I guess, because it hasn't been, it hasn't been. I haven't been feeling it. You know what I mean? I, I just haven't been feeling DC in the route. So at this point, I'm just gonna be like, hey, it is what it is at this point. So if it happens to be great, awesome. If it doesn't, I'm not going in with any expectations of it being good. Um, the fact that it's kind of doing an end game thing for me where it's bringing back old people and all these other characters. I mean, it's, it might just be a, a money run for the, for me, at least, you know what I mean? When I see it, it's just, I'm trying to get big name people in this movie or pure nostalgia people to go see it. I mean, it's, it's where I'm at with it. So, but again, you know, it looks great. Um, the fact that Keaton's in it and, you know, we had the line that, you know, Mike was saying. Like it's it's nice that they're bringing it all back together and actually yeah. doing some type of closure for for his character, so I'm with it. I'm, but you know, again, open minded. I guess you haven't closed to me. At this point, no. I mean, I felt like you you have to just kind of just just go see it and then let the let the experience kind of dictate where you are with DC at that point. Yeah. Um, but again, what a lot of people have been saying it it is an amazing movie. Um, they they are saying Ezra's doing a fantastic job with his stuff. You know, even with everything going on, and I guess the fact that they put so much money into this, DC has no choice but to release it. You know, what I mean, they can't drop this ball because they drop this ball, they start off wrong with this new this new uh, route they're trying to run. And if it does actually rewrites or restarts the DC universe, and it does it correctly, James Gunn can now run it. He can run it. Um, no point it does, yeah, run it. <laughs> I get it. But yeah, if if it doesn't, then now he's got more on his plate because now he has to right those wrongs and then start his story. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, again, DC hasn't been, you know, it's left a bad taste in my mouth for the last couple of years. So I'm hoping that this will kind of right some of those wrongs. Just go, with, just enjoy the movie. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're like a flash fan and as Mike, as Mike is, you know, a, a Batman and that's the thing. fan with Michael I love Keaton. The TV show. Just go and enjoy it. Yeah. The TV show for me was amazing. I loved it. I love the TV I shows. Got... TW did such an amazing, do- amazing job. Uh, it was yeah. low budget, but didn't feel low budget in some t- in some cases. Off at, like season like five or six, whenever like Cicada came in, it just dropped off. But I, it had a really good run. It was, no pun intended. It, it, it felt it, it, really it good too. <laughs> yeah. The I don't know, man. It was a really well done thing. And then I think the fact for a lot of fans too is that CW did such an amazing job, and I feel like the movies haven't been able to give us that same. You know what I mean? That same feel. Mm. Um, because it's almost like you already got this in your in, in your palette. You know what I mean? You can't cleanse it with something else and then nothing changes. Like it, you know, it just needs to be, I don't know, it just needs to feel a little bit more cohesive for me, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's why yeah. I'm going to this movie with open minded. Just as a flash fan, just go in, you're getting a flash movie. Yeah. Just go in and enjoy it. Yeah, if, this if is, you don't enjoy it, that's fine. Just, this is his standalone movie, right? Yeah. This is the only standalone Flash movie we've gotten. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it might work. Who knows? Here's the biggest thing for me. And y'all guys are right. This is Flash movie, right? This is his movie. Mm -hmm. Most of our conversation wasn't even about him. Most of the conversation has been about Supergirl and Batman. And that's the problem. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, and I know it's all fanfare right now when it comes to what they're doing because. Did we, in all honesty, we needed to hear Michael Keaton say, I'm Batman. I get that. But you want to get nuts? I didn't need to hear that. that, no. that yeah, I kind of I I wish that was in the movie. Well, like, I, Or I wish I saw it in a the theater. Um, yeah, not yeah. in the trailer. Right. Yeah, if we were saw it in the movie, it probably would have been like, okay, I, like, uh, like, oh, that, that's where he's money. But, like, I didn't, 
is on fanfare. And it's like, all right, are are we going to take away from like Flash only solo movie to like, wow, that was one heck of a goodbye for Michael Keaton's Batman only? That's going to be the top thing we're going to get from it. Here's my rebuttal. I got a good rebuttal for you, life. You remember that airport fight when everyone was fighting at the airport, all the Marvel heroes? That was really cool. And you remember that yeah. time that Captain America was fighting Tony Stark? And that was really cool. And yes. there was a, a, an emotional through line in that movie. And it was Steve Rogers' journey. Um, it, Civil War is a Captain America movie with all of the heroes in it, right? Correct. It's still a Steve Rogers movie, though, right? Yes. Can this not be a Barry Allen movie without? <clears throat> can this not be a Barry Allen movie with all the other heroes in it as the same? It's very possible, but at the end of the day, and watching that movie, who got the biggest shine? The whole entire movie. Spider Man. No. <laughs> oh, I, thought I, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I, who was all on the poster for that? It was Cap and Iron Man, like duking it out on the poster. Yeah, you but can ha- you can have these movies and they can be titled a certain hero, but you know, if the emotional through line is the, the title character, then everything else is just gravy. It adds I, to it. I mean the, the way at, I'm oh god, Larry. At the end of the day, to go right back at you, Mike, at the end of the day, as we was hype up on Spider Man, for example, mm. at the end of the day, it was Steve Rogers that Crush the the end of the truck that make the truck fall on Spidey, and he had the line like, "Where you from, kid?" And he's like, "Bronx," and he walks off. So who gets the shine at the end of the day? As hype as we was about Spider Man, who get the shine? It was it was, it was it, it was still it, it, Captain Rogers. It it wasn't mm-hmm. Bronx. It was Brooklyn. But get track. Okay, tell him, Kev. And that, that's what I'm saying. I think right. this can still be, um, as long as Barry's the through line and the emotional heart of this movie, which I think he will be, I, you know, it'll still be a Flash movie. Be. The the we story hope. of Flashpoint um, in, in the book is Barry makes a decision and he screws up and he's right. got to fix it. And he, to fix the problem, he has to let his mom die. I just I just hope that at the end of the day, it's a Barry Allen story. And it better be since technically there's two of them in this movie. So at, at the end of the day, it's I just wanted to be I just wanted to be his story. And I let this and let this be the recovery story for the person as well, for Ezra. You know what I mean? Because if he acted his behind off in this movie, it's because this probably was like I have no choice but to. I'm at the end. Of, I'm at the the wicks end right now. I'm I'm done mm-hmm. if I if I screw this up, and like oh they giving me a chance for this movie to come out, and I still may have a job afterwards. Yeah, I need to go ahead and and actually do something right. So that, yeah, that's what that's, that's what I was about to ask you guys. Uh, if this movie is a win, let's just say it's a win. It's claiming that is it is. It, is James Gunn really going to bring back Ezra? No. You can't bring Ezra back. No. I mean, you, you see what he did with Cavill, and Cavill did nothing wrong. True. Now, 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 now here's can't the even, thing. You can't even put Ezra out on the red carpet for the premiere. You can't. I mean, he's going to get bombasted by reporters and asking him about everything he's done. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. You can't bring him back. He'll be virtually there. You, you get yourself a new, either a new Flash or you get a. You get Wally to be your new Flash. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't even you think bring, you, definitely you can't bring Wally West. Yeah, you cannot bring Ezra back. Now, the the only way that they can find a way to bring him back, only way, is what the rumors that's going around now is that the Snyderverse is continuing, and he can be on that side only. But it's not continuing on with the strength of what of what Gun is actually going to go ahead and do with the DC EU, whatever what he's going to title it now. Uh, I think that's the only way that that's going like he's going to survive this you know this run. That's the only way. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's the only way he's going to survive. 
in all honesty. But I mean, with a good performance come more jobs. Mm-hmm. So you know, so more jobs and but are the agencies going to hire him? I mean, let's look at Justin Ma- or Jonathan Majors right now. He he was dropped. I mean, it seems like he's yeah. acquitted, but he was dropped and he's got some baggage with him now. Of course, there's other people coming out, and it's, mm-hmm. it's a really tough uh, tough call to make. Um, but, yeah, just you can't bring him back. And um, just, for instance, do you know that, like, let's look at the Justice League animated series. Barry was never in that. It was always Wally, and it didn't yeah. make a difference. That is true. Wow. As long as it's a flash, it doesn't matter which one it is. But I guess yeah. that's a... I guess that's a like I guess one of the positives about always having multiple flashes and having multiple Green Lanterns that you know at any time they can go ahead and just pop in another Green Lantern, yeah, or mm-hmm. pop in another you know another Flash and as long as it's a Flash and as long as it's a Green Lantern it doesn't matter which one it is, but the one thing that always got to stay consistent is Superman and Batman, but they've been changing that up too. So as long as it's Bruce and Clark, it'll be okay. Correct. Correct. All right, so well, I mean, no, no matter what, it's funny. It's you know, as up and down as we may be when it comes to so, the idea I of. Have an answer for that. Shut Is up! That my Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> That's your guest, Alexa. <laughs> she wants to put her two cents in too. Uh, okay, she she can't hear me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My good, that was scary. But uh, regardless, <laughs> oh, she's always listening. Oh, that's the problem, dude. I just always want to ask you, watching um, Wazowski. Always, always watching. watching. <laughs> 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 All right, so, but you know, regardless of how you know we may feel about the trailer and back and forth, and they're still really in the show too, too much. But you no, know, it was. I don't know about excite excitement that we have, but we're going to see it. You know, it's you know mm-hmm. we have to see how this story ends and just how the direction is going to actually go. It's, 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 it's exciting button. to see that DC is trying is trying to make a change and trying to go in a different direction. I think that's a cool thing. Um, From uh, what I understood, um, James Gunn might have had a little bit of create creative control on how the ending is. And from what I've heard, the ending does segue up like the new DC universe. Oh, okay. Somewhere. There we right. go. So this is supposed to be a reset. Exactly. Well, and then um, what's next? Uh, Blue Beetle's next, which is supposed to be in the new DC universe. So. Mm-hmm. And it looks great, by the way. It does. It, does. it looks absolutely great. And uh, like, I'm actually more excited. It's funny. And it shouldn't be this way. I'm I'm a little more excited for Blue Beetle than I am for the Flash. And I know it shouldn't be that way, but uh, I'm really excited because I've never seen, you know, I never seen Blue Beetle on blue, on the big screen. So it'll be pretty cool to see something new. You know what I mean? Yeah. The honey. Who doesn't, doesn't want to so see different. George Luke Lopez with a mullet? <laughs> I can live about George Lopez without I know it, but <laughs> but I feel where you're coming from with that one. I do. So anyway, all right. So look, we have one last thing on the docket that we have to talk about. You know, before it becomes too too late in our conversation, we can't talk about it at all. Uh, coming up next week, something that we all have to plan for is Guardians of the Flipping Galaxy Part Three. Let's go. Let's go. So far, going by the, uh, say, the other embargo type of conversations that I've seen, and I didn't want to go too in-depth with anybody's review because I don't want it to kind of sway my excitement to seeing it. I'm sure y'all guys are the same way. So far, so great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. No, every, Very emotional. Is, r- correct. Like, and... I guess key is, which is the one thing that Marvel always had an issue with, is the stakes are real in mm-hmm. this one. Where, you know, it's, we never really felt that any other Marvel you know, character and their debut of a movie was, like, really in danger. 
really to be honest with you. Maybe Spider Man and and uh and No Way Home. Uh mm-hmm. this the stakes was very high in that one. At least but I still didn't feel like uh, he wasn't gonna win at the end of the day. Uh but like here is like here the stakes is up is up pretty high. So I I guess what extreme thing are you looking forward to with this movie? Like I guess like you know who's who's gonna make it out of this thing? Yeah, man. Uh so I guess yesterday I saw uh Bradley Cooper was talking about it and he was like, It's it's awesome, it's a good ride, but even he at the end cried. Um, and we all know mm-hmm. who Bradley Cooper plays in this movie, you know, right. so it's like does he cry because, you know, his character doesn't make it out? You know what I mean? It's one of those things like, because you got to think that that character is him. You know what I mean? So if it hit him as hard as it did, what if that, what if it's Rocket? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's honestly, it's between Rocket and Drax. Cause now you get, you see the reports that David Steve said he's done. Oh, uh, Drax is done. <laughs> Dra- yeah, Drax is done. Uh, what what I really want is if Star Lord were to make like the ultimate sacrifice, um, maybe have the original Gamora um, somehow come back, or maybe he gets to see her one last time. The original, um, and he gets to go off in the afterlife with her in some kind of way. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Okay, that's that's a beautiful way and to end that. That would be, that would be like a great closing shot. I think. I agree. Um, maybe they'll go to Valhalla. I don't know. But Ooh. I'm just trying to think of like the realms that Marvel has, and just have them walk off together and like fade the white. Done. Ooh, wow, Mike, Ooh. that was great. Yeah, I don't think Star Lord's making it out. Um, Drax, um, didn't Thanos take away his family, and that was why he was after him? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. yes, he killed he right. killed their entire Same family. Thing. Yeah, maybe maybe they go visit Drax, and he's with his family at the end. Maybe he, I don't know. I would love to see, like, mm. if we're going to, like, finalize these characters and finalize this iteration, um, I could do it with some class. I, Let them get I what could, they want. I could see, like, if Rocket dies, they'll replace him with Layla. Yeah. Yes. His, his girlfriend. But just uh, um, financially, too, like, if you can keep Rocket and Groot. The actors physically, you know, aren't there. So if they grow older, or they make cameos down the line. It's not like you have to kiss. Yeah, that's just voice old... actors. Exactly. As, so as I long think... as they keep the dog, that's, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> no? <For> yeah. The... <laughs> that's a special... um, dog. I've always loved going retriever. <laughs> I would. I would like to see like we'll, we'll say Cosmo, Rocket, and Groot, and Layla like you know go off and and pull a Mando, go retire together. Let them do like a furry friends thing. <laughs> Furry friends adventures. <laughs> no black well, they allowed. Did, they did show a a scene of of uh, the four like Rocket, Layla, and the two others who are being experimental on how they got their names. So you're saying like, oh, let's go get our name. Yeah, and Rocket was. You can see why he chose that name <laughs> because he says, "I want to build a build a ship and just travel beyond the stars." With my friends, oh, wow. like a rocket. Hmm. Oh, I see. I gotcha. Mm. I like that. So, uh, okay. So, when it comes to, um, oh god, I love the idea of Valhalla. Right. I I, I and, like, love that. Thor's idea. already kind of like intertwined with the Guardians a little bit. Right, and I'm wondering with the, you know, with the rules of Valhalla. You have to be a god, right? Oh, but yeah, no, uh, not necessarily have to be a god though. But uh, a son of ego. Yeah, so... I mean, correct. Can... So, you guys tell same... me, was there was was there like a heaven in like celestials? I have no idea. I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so. But leaving that wide open to Valhalla. Yeah. If that is a, a possible option for him to possibly go to, that means that he can come back. Just like uh, Jane comes back. How do we know if Jane comes back? She came back in the comics. 
but we don't know if they're gonna run that route with the the yeah. MCU though. But remember when uh when Hondo welcomed her in mm-hmm. and she turned and she turned around and then it went black. You think she's gonna go back? I didn't get that vibe from that, but yeah. hey, it's a possibility though. That is a so, huge possibility. Huh, interesting. Yeah, so that's really, really interesting if that's the route that they go. And, or, what if Star-Lord actually makes it through, but Mantis dies? Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I know. Good. I know that would hurt. But... Because you, cause you got... Cause you, <laughs> Yeah, you start I know. to love her more after the holiday special. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she became one of my favorites after the holiday special. Mm-hmm. But she's also the sister of Peter, aka she can make it to Valhalla too, going by that theory. Yeah, but true. here's the thing though. So we all know the theory of the title screen of the movie kind of dictates who dies. We got Groot in the first one. We got I'm your daddy in number two. Mm. (laughs) I'm your daddy, boy. I'm your daddy, boy. (laughs) Yondu got, you know, got scrapped in the second movie. The colors on this one. Now, if you haven't noticed, there's two different colored title screens for this. Is there? There is a brown one and there's a gray and red one. Did not notice. Yeah, there's Mm -hmm. two. So a lot of people were saying Drax for the gray and red and then Rocket for the brown. It's like a brown and yellow. Okay. So mm-hmm. now do we hold true to that or do you think that's a scapegoat for something else? Uh, Could Groot or... die again? <laughs> Don't kill Groot. He about to get some cosmic sh- body thing, man, the way he's looking like. Yeah, he look like a linebacker. Who? <laughs> let the Eagles I'm not, love him, it right? very much. <laughs> yeah, if he, if he comes, if he comes out of Georgia, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what do you, that's the Eagles reference. Eagles reference. Silence, I kill you. I got, uh, <laughs> go birds. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, it's glowing green. It was glowing green. When I said that. Perfect timing. Not. That was blue. Oh well. Yeah, right. Giants. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> like uh yeah no <laughs> yeah yeah no sorry George <laughs> uh, yeah no so I, look I'm a I'm really excited for you know for the possibilities of what this actually is and it's a movie that kind of stands alone for itself we don't mm-hmm. we're not going to watch this movie to see how the story continues and we're going to watch this movie to see how it ends and we know it's going to be a continuation we know it's it's the future, but it's we're not going there for the continuation of the story. We're going there to see how they finish this. Mm-hmm. And I mean, fact, yeah. I think um, Star Lord has had this slow arc where he still he he'll get to a point, but he'll still make a selfish decision, and we've seen that at, at just about everything he's ever done. I think it'll come to a point where he'll build up. And he makes the selfless decision, and that could spell the end for him and the team. Um, and I think that would be a fitting conclusion. Not, not that I'm like, oh, kill Star Lord, kill Star Lord. No, it's <laughs> not at all. But I think that would be a, a nice like end cap to his arc. For him well, to, to make, add like, to Mike though, um, you know the Marvel like toy figuring things. Like Kev, you got the Mjolnir. Uh, hammer, right? Yeah. Well, so they made Marvel made a collector's version of Star Lord's helmet for their toy collection. Mm-hmm. Um, what if that's a sign that he's to go to? Because we got the same thing for Cap when he got the gauntlet and he died right for Endgame. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I was thinking about that earlier when I saw the toy, and I was like, "They're giving out Star Lord's helmet for this movie." You mean Iron Man? No, and and they make they made the helmet for Star Lord. No, no, no. Like, I'm talking about you said uh, for Cap, and he died. Oh, I, I said Cap. Yeah, I meant Iron Man. Yeah, my bad. Oh, okay. You got me though. You got me. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm sorry. But I was like, I could have sworn they they could have sworn I could have sworn they made the Star Lord helmet when the first Guardians came out. I don't think so. This is one of those collector ones. Hmm. Like hmm. those like exclusive collective ones or whatever it's called or whatever. But yeah, mm-hmm. it, it looks just like it. I don't remember them for the first movie, though. I could have yeah, sworn they did. The, okay. the first movie, everyone was like, who are these guys? Yeah, yeah who like nobody they? knew who Star Wars was, so I wouldn't have gotten that back then. But now you got to now you're in Guardians 3. I mean, if you give that out as a or if that's a toy thing that people are going to want to collect now, is it because he's going to pass too? Could be. Could be. James no, Gunn he, said this is the ending of this, of these Guardians. Mm, yeah, we of can this have group, um of this group, of this group, yeah, of this so. group, right? But the gardens continue. Yeah, just won't be this exact group. So that's where it becomes interesting. Mm-hmm. What, like, what, like, who is the continuation to the guardians group? You know, the like two CGI characters, Mantis and the blue girl. I can't think of her name. Nebula. Nebula. Nebula, there you go. Nebby Nebs. They they said that her and Chris Pratt were like amazing in this movie. Really? Yeah. So I can't wait to actually see that for us, you know, like see the reality of that. Because you know who I'm excited for? Adam Warlock. Yes. That's something we ain't uh, even talking about yet. Like. Nobody's mentioned Adam Warlock. Because they're really not this... showing him. They're only but, showing like little snippets. And that's why I love the fact that we're only getting teases of him. We don't even know mm. what his power level is like. Like we don't know right. how strong he really is. Um, and apparently he is like not a fully uh what was it? Somebody was saying he's like uh Adam Warlock, like I don't know, in in the infancy stage or something like that. Like, you know, what I mean he's oh. not even at his strongest capacity yet. So he's still a baby. Yeah. I haven't even seen his final form yet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. It's over 3,000! <laughs> or 9,000. But yeah, oh, so like this is, this is Adam Warlock in his infancy. He's just becoming Adam Warlock. It's the mm-hmm. first time we actually see him. So he's just going to tiptoe his way around his powers until he gets to his like, yeah, this is what I can do. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. what if he's get added to the to the future Guardians as well? Well, he, you know, he is actually a guardian in the, in the comic books, mm-hmm. so it would make sense. Uh, maybe he's the one that takes the leader role. Possibility mm-hmm. ne- is n- never know. It really, really is going to depend. I mean, I would hate to lose, uh, the lose Star Lord. I mean, me. That's just me being as selfish as he is normally. I would hate to lose him because I really like that character. I really, I really, really like. But you know what? That's good for them because I really like all of them. Yeah, they all have like a special place in my heart. You know what I mean? I've just seen, especially the the, the Christmas special. I oh, yeah. loved Mantis yeah. and Drax's relationship after that. Like they were just okay characters for me. But then that you do the Guardians Christmas special, and you're like, they're funny. They're cool yeah. together. You know what I mean? It's like two toddlers. They really, <laughs> yeah, they were like two big old kids, and they're just like, oh, money. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought that was really cool because now they're human for me now, and I think they're more mm-hmm. relatable. You know what I mean? They, Mantis gets drunk as heck. Like, it's just like, crazy. Oh, she's so funny. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, they they uh, they they know a way to make those characters, um, you know, touch your heartstrings. And then when they're gone, that's gonna hurt. You know what I mean? No matter yeah. who it is in this movie, man, I can tell you right now, it's gonna hurt. Yeah. Um, because we we built the bond with these characters over the years in in multiple movies not even just you know the three that they're in in multiple movies you know what i mean and the fact that we got to see a little bit of them in the last thor movie like it's still it, you know they gave us a little bit of loving from them too so i, I love i love their their dynamic with thor <laughs> yeah like it's just there there's so much banter going on between all these characters now and it's just nice to see uh because it helps develop them more for us to enjoy them absolutely Absolutely. Well, we have literally one week less than that uh, we need to figure this, this out. movie. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We all like. I think we're all doing something at the end of this week. Frank included with that too. Uh, see, Kev, I'm the one that mentioned Frank in this episode, not you. 
Good job. Uh, Frank included. So, yeah, so we got to figure something out in order for us to go ahead and see. This I, always, I, I always know you have him on your mind. It's okay. This just got weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to look right past that one. Jack <laughs> I don't All think right. you can, Larry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So there we go. I think we're we're done for this episode. I'm look, I'm I'm loving this new way. Oh, yeah. So here's a, a little breakdown, guys. Uh sorry I had to wait to the end of the uh, the whole episode this to, to kind of hear this story. So uh just a week and a half ago or two weeks ago two weeks ago yeah uh episode 25 was recorded inside the studio mm. and it was george mike kev and frank uh all four guys was there and it was a star wars bonanza mm-hmm. star mm-hmm. wars all day every day they had nothing yeah. else to say Balls. there was a uh, there was a matrix blue pill joke that i had Never, right. never, no, no one got to hear it. <laughs> there was, All right, Kevin, it's the ultimate insider now. Yeah, so some deep uh, thoughts on playing 99. Oh, God. <laughs> All good. Look, I, I heard that I heard that the episode was absolutely amazing, and no one heard it because it didn't record. I'm having it stayed in the studio, it was just so good. We decided to just keep it in the studio, no one can hear it. <laughs> Good old Pro Tools said no tools. <laughs> so uh, that's the reason why this is episode 25 and not the last one. Whatever, how it's you still, looking it's, at it's it. still crazy, man. And I brought up to you, George, Larry. I, I, like the very first episode, very first episode, Larry's mic wasn't working. And then right after the, the first episode, after our one year, that happened. Well, no, you gotta remember what Jack yeah, what a lot of people what's don't. Happen next time. The whole remember... student's power is gonna get blown out. <laughs> no, remember, Kev, during our anniversary, at the end of our last recording, I want to say with with uh, J one or with J one. Which no, one was we, it? Or was we, or was we, what was it from Baby Gorilla? We Jose. recorded with uh, J one first, and then they uh, Jose. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I be- I believe it was it was it was a recording of Jose. At the end of that episode, my oh. mic cut off again. It did. <laughs> it did. Yo, it's I don't know what it is, Larry. I don't know what it is, bro. It's just always you. It's that's, always you. That, that's why I had to buy my own. <laughs> Make sure it worked. <laughs> it, and it looked and it looked very pretty. Yeah, it was like I don't know what happened. Like he's mid conversation, and it's like, oops, Larry's gone. Like I. <laughs> and then it just magically came back, and I'm like, "What the hell just happened?" <laughs> <laughs> like that was one that was one heck of an edit for us, man. To yeah, that that was... audio all oh together and get the sound from one to another one. I couldn't do it. I was like, "George, help!" I can't. Yeah, do that it. was. <sighs> this is why I don't do video, guys. <laughs> audio, it is. I can't. I was like, "Woo!" Oh God. But regardless, uh, but right now we're. Uh, no, we're obviously we're not at the studio. We're on StreamYard. We just wanted to give y'all guys a different uh, aspect of us recording and bringing our content to y'all guys. So basically, we can be more proactive to things that's happening instead of us being, you know, like a week or a number of days behind because we're waiting to get back to the studio. So when things pop up real hot and real you know, and, and like real popping and boiling up hot and we want to talk about it. We don't have to wait for a whole week for it to actually start to boil down. We want to be right there in the center of everything. So we're the little Caesars of podcasts. We'll be hot and ready. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you kept it like somewhat PG thirteen because that's real close. That was- <laughs> Very close. I mean, usually I gotta pay like extra for hot and ready. So, oh, man. <laughs> oh is, yeah, yeah. It sounds like sounds like you're gonna need that blue pill again. The right <laughs> oh, I'm out. Yo, I'm out. Come Eric, on. Check this out. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just, <laughs> Goodbye. I'm, I'm putting it out in the ether there. But theoretically, when we see Guardians, we can come home and record like our reactions. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. 
yeah, it's yeah, absolutely, it's, up, guys. it's absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And that's what, you know, and this is why I'm, we wanted to do this this week to make sure that this was a reliable reality for the GNT crew, just so we can be able to bring y'all more stuff and we can have a larger conversation or even shorter conversation, but more frequently. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this and dive more with StreamYard and any other kind of content stuff that we can go ahead and do together. So, guys, just continue to just be there with us as we grow and go beyond uh, because our plan is to not stop. We're not going to stop no matter what. We're going to keep going. That we won't stop. I thought I told you it's that. We won't stop. I thought I told you that. <laughs> it's like a circle. It's, it's you and this dagger oh. circle, Kev. That's I'm the fourth busy. time you said a circle. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magic number. <laughs> All right, guys, any, any last comments y'all guys want to give or say? Hey, okay. close it out. Uh, yeah, this worked good. Um, keep watching what we're doing. Uh, we're going to keep adding things to the YouTube channel. We're going to keep growing. I'm excited. Yeah, if you guys... And thank you. Oh, thank okay. you for the 2,000 people who liked my Peaches uh, hey. video. Oh, How about man. that? That Peaches thing. 2,000 and almost 200, I think. Last time I checked, family. That Kev, was the... you need to do more of that. Well, how Bye about guys. this? That was the only thing that you recorded. <laughs> <The whole thing. laughs> y'all was there for a whole hour to have discuss Star Wars discussion. The only thing y'all got was that. <laughs> <laughs> worth it. It was so worth it. Two thousand, two thousand <laughs> views later. <laughs> Sorry, I had to drive off after that comment. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> good job, George. You're welcome. <laughs> go ahead, George. <laughs> yeah, if you guys, uh, if you guys like the new Streamyard platform, uh, let us know if you guys want anything specific on the Streamyard platform. Um, you know, don't hesitate to tell us because at the end of the day, we're going to keep growing. For everyone that listens, everyone that participates, you know, with this out with this platform now, it's going to allow us to bring you guys in more easily. You know what I mean? Click a link, boom, boom, you're in. So mm -hmm. uh, we're excited to start bringing in more people with this. Um, and it's just easy. You know, we want more consistency with the pod. Every two weeks is not enough from what we've been told. You know what I mean? So if we can do more, I'm, we're all willing to do it for you guys. Um, so, yeah, let us know what you guys think. Nice. And just so y'all guys know, there's a number of things that we're working on on top of just our normal podcast. So. Uh, prepare yourself for a couple of introductions that's going to be coming up real soon where uh, me and Kev is consider well we're not considering we're going to go ahead and do it uh, oh, no, we're we doing it <laughs> yeah 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 we will do it we will have a GNT sports uh pod coming up Whoa. really really soon and it's just going to be us just talking sports man that's uh it's look the, this geek at the nerd table name is more than just us talking just in star wars marvel look if you end the fantasy football guess what you're a geek because you're in the stats Dun dungeons and dragons with sports <laughs> ab ab absolutely so we have a number of people that we're planning on having that's part of this discussion as well uh more people that's going to be adding on to the gnt crew so prepare yourselves for the future for us uh, because we're excited for our future uh, with y'all guys. So there you go. That is it. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Until next time, stay safe, stay humble, and just keep on welcoming people to the table. Peace out, y'all. Later. Peace. Peace.